Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome aboard! My name is Rosie and I was born in the year 1998 in Manchester in the northwest of England. I have lived here ever since with my mum, a teaching assistant, my dad, a human resources officer in a college and my younger brother. This is my Oxford University story. My story begins in the year 2012, which was my penultimate year at the local state secondary school. It was during this time that I was considering what to take for A-levels and my mum recommended that it might be useful to see which A-levels were needed for certain courses that I might want to take at university. By this point, I was pretty set on studying archaeology. I did briefly go through a phase of preferring dinosaurs, but... I discovered that I needed physics to get into a Russell Group University to study paleontology, so I quickly changed my mind. Having seen that UCLan, Manchester University, York and Nottingham all did some form of archaeology and all wanted students from well-rounded scientific and creative backgrounds, I cemented them in my mind. I was going to go to University of Manchester and my A-levels would be biology, geography, sociology, general studies and textiles. I wasn't too keen on leaving home at this point, mainly due to fears of not being able to afford to live away from home. Fast forwards to GCSE results day, and I still hadn't even really thought about going to Oxford. I was aware that they did the course I wanted because it came up on Google search, but my mum and I had only joked about actually getting in. People from my background and area didn't go to Oxford, you see. That all changed when I opened my envelope and revealed 10 A stars. I was over the moon and in total shock. Maybe I could get into Oxford. I saw my granddad shortly after this and he informed me that Oxford was a collegiate university and that I would have to choose a college. I had no idea what he was talking about and so he agreed to take me to Oxford and show me around himself. Although my granddad had only ever been a tourist there and not a student, I was still extremely fortunate just to have someone to take me around. I began my A-levels in September 2014 the jump from GCSE was big, but I thought I was coping pretty well. That was in everything but biology. Having an essay mind and not a naturally scientific one, biology had seemed to get almost impossibly hard for me. I would revise every night just to take in the content. It didn't help that at this point in my life, a healthy increase in exercise and clean eating over the summer after year 11 had started to turn sour. My mind had started to become so flooded with calories, fitness regimes, rules about meal times, and ways of getting to the gym as much as possible without anyone realising that I had almost lost the ability to think about anything else. As my weight dropped rapidly, as did my ability to concentrate and be creative. My textiles grades were slipping from A stars and A's to B's at a push because I simply could not muster the effort to give artistic flair or be innovative in my designs. My biology grades were also at an all-time low, and this didn't help the matter. I guess you could say that in order to counteract my loss of control over biology, I turned to controlling food. It wasn't until the summer after I had participated in the unique summer school and decided that I was definitely applying to Oxford that my mindset began changing, and my desire to reach top grades and achieve Oxford started pushing in front of other thoughts. I applied for Unique in the January of Year 12 and cannot recommend it enough for people from non-Oxbridge working class backgrounds that are academically capable. I stayed in Jesus College in July 2015 and studied Egyptology for a week, completing an essay, lectures and a tutorial. It was super hard work, but I enjoyed every minute. Like I said, it really did solidify the fact that I would actually apply to Oxford University. After Unique, writing a personal statement was the next thing to be done. Unfortunately, after receiving my AS grades, I had to rethink some of the choices I had previously made on my UCAS form. For example, I had to exchange bioarchaeology at York for straight archaeology, as I had only come out with a D in AS biology. I received A's in my four other subjects though, so Oxford was still well and truly on the cards. I did decide to carry on studying biology, despite my sixth form protesting. I just wasn't ready to give up yet. Alongside trying to get my personal statement in for early entry, I was just beginning my extended project qualification. Yep, at this point I was still taking five A-levels and an EPQ. This didn't last long though, as I did actually drop biology after a term. 
After four drafts, I submitted my personal statement to UCAST along with a 500 word piece for the archaeology department and two sample essays from my A-level subjects. I was applying to Hartford at this point, and so I phoned their admissions helpline to discuss my biology grade. I was advised to submit a letter explaining my extenuating circumstances. It was this year that I was also invited by the local private school to take part in a bi-weekly club based around classics and human origins. The teachers running the club were super helpful and also gave me a mock interview, which I doubt I would have had the opportunity to do otherwise. On November 13th, I received the well-awaited invitation to interview at Hartford College. I was buzzing. Fast forward to December 9th, 2015. I was travelling long distance alone for only the second time, the other being unique. But I was super excited. I arrived at Hartford and specifically remember taking part in a quiz on the first night. Day one of interviewing was the next day. I had one in the morning and one in the afternoon, both at Hartford College. On day two, I also had two interviews, but this time both were in the morning at St Hughes College, and I had to leave Hartford at 8am. Finally, on the day that I assumed would be free for me to chill and go home, I was called for an interview at St Peter's College. I can safely say that I bonded with the tutors here much more and felt a lot more comfortable in the interview. On January 7th, 2016, I got a text from my mum to say that a thick letter had arrived for me from Oxford. I got an offer and actually went straight back to school to show my head of sick form, who was waiting for word on how I'd done. Actually, I was going to work because I worked in the same place, doing gymnastics in the gymnasium, but yeah, whatever. He was super happy and immediately phoned the main school's head teacher. It was a first for the sick form. No one had gone to Oxford before. Having dropped biology and with my Oxford application behind me, I was in a much better mindset for the rest of year 13. I began tutoring several people alongside my studies and helping some of the year 12s with possible Oxford applications. My A-level exams went super well on the whole, despite getting RSI because apparently I revised too much. I woke up on results day at 7am and eagerly awaited UCAS track. I had decided that if I was going to cry because I hadn't met my offer, then I would rather do it in my bed, in the dark, than in a room full of teachers and friends. At 7.40am, UCAS track updated, and I saw the congratulations, you've got a place at Oxford University, and immediately shouted for my mum. I had done it. Once at school, I found that I had actually exceeded my offer by a grade, and also had got an A star in general studies, as well as full marks on my EPQ. The rest of the summer was spelt chilling, going on holiday, and buying university supplies, and on October 2nd, 2016, I moved into St Peter's College, University of Oxford. My name is Rosie and that was my Oxford University story.